This is the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Kendall of the notaballerina.com travel blog. Every episode, I'll share travel tales from several fellow travel lovers, and together we hope to entertain and inspire you, remind you of some of your own great travel experiences, and encourage you to hit the road again soon. Hello and welcome to episode 109 of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. Today we're getting a bit visual, which is perhaps weird for a podcast, but we're going to be talking about photographs and in particular travellers taking photographs. Now I think it's probably a common thing that the more you travel, the more you want to take better photographs. You know, when you travel, you take pictures. And if you travel a lot, you take lots of pictures, especially these days with uh, mobile phones as well as uh, cheaper cameras um, all around you. And over time, you start to want them to be good pictures. And that's kind of the trajectory that uh, each of my guests chats about today. Um, I'm a bit of a slow learner. I have long had um, a fairly simple DSLR camera. So a proper camera, so to speak, just a, not a fancy one, but still more than just a phone. Uh, and I have been using it in automatic for years. Uh, the same with the previous DSLR I had. And yeah, the photos are better to start with, but I could make them much better. Uh, in fact, as maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I finally went um, on a photography course uh, run by a friend of mine to learn more about using my camera properly. It was quite eye-opening and I'm hoping to um, use what I learnt on my next couple of trips. So uh, watch this space, so to speak, and we'll see if um, I have any ability. I think partly I've always doubted my ability to be visual. So I'm good with words and I'm good at talking. Uh, But anything visual, you know, drawing, artistic stuff, even photography, I've always kind of thought, no, that's not my thing. But why not? I can at least learn and improve a bit. So we'll see how we go. So shout out to Singh, um, who has uh, runs Venture Photography here in Perth. I went to one of his workshops. It was awesome. If you're in Perth, yell and I will send you Singh's way. Anyway, my first guest today is Jim Jones, and we chatted about how he came to be more and more interested in photography over time. They started uh, photography in high school um mm. back in the in the 80s in the film era developing my own black and white and stuff like that um kind of got out of it after high school and and um but you know always had this you know inkling desire to to get back in so in uh 2007 my wife and I took a two week trip um around Europe we did it exclusively by train and I decided you know I really want to get back into photography and, you know, because we travel a lot and I wanted to capture the places we went. So I bought my first DSLR then. Mm -hmm. Um, I I look back on my photos from then and they're they're absolute crap. They're just (laughs) awful. Um, But I I really just developed a passion for um, for photography, uh, for um, for post processing, for capturing an image and and really what i've focused on over the last no pun intended what i've um drilled into in the last year or two um is really learning how to tell stories through uh. my photos so it's not just um here is this uh you know kind of random cafe in paris but here's a random cafe and there's an old man and a beautiful young woman sitting there and they're leaning in. What kind of conversation are they having? What are they drinking? Mm. What does he think about her? What's And those are the questions that come to mind or that I, that I want to come to mind when you look at my photos. So that's um, that's why I named my blog Travel Stories and Images, mm. because it's stories about the places that I've been but also using the images to uh, to tell and to uh, to further the story. Oh, well, that's wonderful because it's taking that a picture is worth a thousand words a little bit further and being you know really intentional about creating a story with your photos. And I love that. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's um, and I you know I I still take you know a ton of photos. So uh, a couple of years ago, my wife and I went to uh, Tanzania. It was our twenty fifth mm. wedding anniversary. And uh, we were in we were there for nine days in three national parks. I took 
uh, over 3,000 photos. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I've, and literally two years later, there's still some I haven't gone, you know, completely gone through yet. Yeah, but yeah. I've only published maybe 150, 200 of them um, because those are the ones that, that really – tell the story or convey the, the, the message that I, that I want conveyed from mm. that, that particular um, part of the journey. Mm. Yeah. Now I've had a look through on your website, some of your amazing photos. So um, yes, it's obviously working, focus, focusing on it. There we go again. Um, it's yeah. obviously, um, <laughs> yes, it, yes. Giving you some uh, very good photography skills. Well, thanks. Thanks so much, Amanda. And, and I'm always, I'm always really, really humbled and, and grateful when people think, say things like that because I look at, I, I like my photos, but, but there's so many great photographers that are out there. It's like, I can't hold a candle to X, Y, Z. And I, we're all our, our own harshest critic. Yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm harsh on myself, but I love hearing from, um, e- educated, informed, travel related people like yourself that look through it and go, wow, this is some good stuff. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Oh, no, you're very welcome. There's some really lovely stuff in here. So um, I will put a link in the show notes, of course, so that uh, the listeners can have a look themselves as well. That's the only downside of a podcast is we don't have the pictures right for you. You just have to imagine them, that they're right. really, really cool. But um, what's what sort of photography do you enjoy the most? Um, you know, there's landscape or people, because I'm looking, you know, you've got quite a, quite a mix of, um, of stuff. Yeah, so um, great question. I, my, my big passion, interestingly, um, is photographing flowers. Uh, um, I, I, yeah. I happen to be... <clears throat> excuse me, very near uh, what's called the Chicago Botanic Garden. Oh. Um, it's, it's a huge place. It's, I, I'm going to have a post coming up on it in uh, the next few weeks. Um, but it's it's just chock full of flowers, plants, all that from all over the world. Um, a, a very close friend of mine is a, is a well-known uh, flower photographer here in the kind of Chicago slash Midwest area where I am. Oh, cool. And uh, I've become, you know, like a, a little, uh, little disciple of, uh, <laughs> of, of her. Um, so I, and, and I, I love going to botanic gardens all around the world, trying to, to squeeze that in uh, where I can. Um, the other thing that I, I really enjoy is um, animal photography. Mm. Uh, I, I mentioned that I took, you know, 3,000 shots in, in Tanzania. I, I would say easily 85% of those are animals. Right. Um, I just, I love capturing the behavior, capturing the um, kind of the, the, the glint in their eye and that, you know, this is a living, breathing thing that, 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 uh, that, that I was honored enough that I was, you know, blessed enough to be able to, uh, to capture in a meaningful way. So, um, and, and then I guess the, the, the third preference would be, um, landscapes, mm-hmm. um, yeah. not much on, on people photography. I do a little bit of architecture photography, uh, you know, when I get, get an inch for it, but I would say flowers, animals, and, uh, and landscapes are kind of my big three. I'm going to include a link to Jim's post on the Chicago Botanic Garden in the show notes, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, now, excuse me, I hope you cannot hear. I have a purring cat on my lap, but there's a reason because it's winter in Perth as I record this, and we don't really do winter. It happens for maybe two or three days a year, and this is one of them. And tonight it's going to be only three degrees, so nearly freezing. That's about as low as the temperature ever, ever gets here. It's only been below freezing once in my lifetime, I think in recorded history, and that was only by like a fraction of a degree. So um, I can hear my cat purring, and she's so cold, poor thing. So um, she's on my lap, but that's what the life of a podcaster can be like. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. I uh, um, would like to welcome the next guest now, which is Erin Gustafsson, who um, you might remember from a recent episode about art galleries. She has quite a knowledge of art and art history, and that might have played into her particular interest in photography as well, I think. That was um, really a start of how the blog was created mm. um, a, as a, a way to share some of that. And um, and I do enjoy writing and telling the stories about it. But the I, I, 
the part that's really bucket filling for me in it is is the photography. I mm-hmm. really enjoy that. Um, and I, I don't have a super fancy camera. I do have a DSLR. Um, I'm a Nikon girl. Uh, and I have I have taken some kind of post editing courses, but mostly it's it's self taught and 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 with I think the art history background, I have a little bit of uh, uh, awareness of of composition and color balance, and so that I think really helps in yes, of course, a bit of an eye for I, it, yeah, yeah, the way that I look at it and the way that I see it. So trying to impart a little bit of that in my kids. Um, how do you compose it? How do you see it instead of just snaps, and it becomes a little bit more than. You know, there's phones everywhere now, and yes. and like I said at the at the Louvre with the cameras and the Mona Lisa. I mean, they're just everywhere, and I don't want to say that some people can take pictures and not others. You know, but making it a little bit more about about the photograph and not just the kind of tick ticked off that thing. Like, so trying to um, trying to impart that. In taking that picture, there's something about something about it that you have framed, or or what, like specifically, what did you what did you see in that photograph? Does that make sense? Mm, absolutely. So putting some putting some thought into it, like yeah. not just oh snap, you know, picture picture yeah. picture, but actually thinking collect collect what's, co- yeah, what's like, the image that I actually want to take away from here right Mm, right mm, mm. so how do you how do you frame it how you know making sure that the horizon lines lined up that Mm -hmm. drives me crazy that drives me nuts too and i'm not even a really a good photographer by any means but when i see wonky horizons on pictures i'm like ah straighten it oh oh, drives me crazy (laughs) and it's so easy to fix even if you didn't get it right the first time yes but um (laughs) yeah but I just, you know, I I like taking I like taking the landscape or the cityscape, but I also love getting the details, like kind mm. of the little things. Um, and so I try to balance between those, kind of the big picture and the like again the more intimate things, like the 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 cool doorknob or mm. the color of the you know the con- color contrast of these doors against that brick um those kind of things i i love the contrasting colors and i love contrasting textures and i seek that out mm. i don't do as much photography of people um mostly because th- maybe it's maybe it's from living in scandinavia but there's a real respect uh respect for privacy and that oh, yes. And so, it, to me, it feels a little bit like an invasion of privacy to take pictures of strangers. Or yes, you know. yes, yes, it's quite a different thing to do. Or you know, either that, or you need to kind of put the the effort and time into you know striking right. up a conversation and all of that. And then it's yep. it's like a whole. It's just a much bigger thing, then, isn't it? It's yes, not, yeah, yes, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I, and I when 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 you have are traveling with teens who are mortified when you just strike up a conversation <laughs> with people trying to take portraits of, of people that we don't know would just, I think, it's, send them over. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's going to create some holiday tension, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I can uh, imagine that. I remember when I was looking at your blog, I had a look at the post about the um, – the spring in Copenhagen, the flowers mm-hmm. and stuff, and you've got such beautiful photos there. Um, Thank it you. Reminded me of um, of you know our recent spring in Japan and seeing all the cherry blossoms there. Yeah, and, mm. I would love to see that. So those those cherry blossoms here are actually from Japan. They, oh, are they right? They, yes, because yeah. some of them look very yes, they look the same. So it's, they um, believable. There was a uh, an and ambassador to Copenhagen who donated them for the 200th or um, offered to donate them from as a gift from Japan for the 200th anniversary of Hans Christian Andersen's birthday. Right. There was a big celebration. Oh, yes, I'm just looking so they, at that post. Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah. Oh, how so they, um, so they do look very, they do look very similar. And now each year the, 
Japanese embassy does a big Sakura festival in mm-hmm. Copenhagen, and I'm sure it's it, you know it's small potatoes compared to um, anything in Japan. But it it there's presentations of taiko drums oh, and lovely. tea ceremonies and it, a little piece for of Copenhagen. Japan. Yeah, so oh, it is. It's a lot like it. They are actually Japanese sakura trees yeah, here in Copenhagen. Yeah, yeah. Oh no wonder it felt so familiar to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, your photos are beautiful. Oh, that's really lovely. And um, you have a climate where they'll grow and blossom and look beautiful. So this yeah. is the problem in Perth. It's too warm, so we don't. Uh, mm, we yeah. can't reproduce well, it here, sadly. After after the very dark and slightly dreary and damp winter that we <laughs> yeah. endure here you in Denmark, um, those blossoms are such a welcome relief and mm-hmm. such a harbinger of spring here that mm. it's just everybody, everybody loves them. So also in the show notes, I'm going to include a link to Erin's post about amazing flowers of Copenhagen in spring, including just beautiful photos of cherry blossoms. Uh, and I think you'll agree that uh, over the years, Erin has really developed her photography skills to be something particularly gorgeous. So uh, yeah, I aspire to be like Erin one day. <laughs> now, my final guest today is Lucas Peters, and he... I think started out being much more just like me. He was a words person. He still is very much a words person. But um, because of the kind of words he was writing, he ended up having to pay more attention to taking decent photographs. Travel photography, um, that's yeah something I ended up getting into almost uh, because I had to. I, I've always been interested in taking photos and stuff, but I've never, you know, really taken the, why well, I should say I hadn't taken the time to, um, really, I don't know, develop that very much or mm-hmm. invest in the equipment or anything like that. Um, and then when, uh, the, when moon publishing or when Avalon publishing, so let me back up when Avalon publishing hired me to do their moon guide from Morocco, uh-huh. Um, one of the stipulations for that is I had to provide photographs for you know part of the country, um, if not all of them. And right. so, yeah, so that that kind of put a big um, you know, kind of fire in my uh, belly to get out there and you know make sure everything looked good because it was going to be my book. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure it looked good. It's so a good I, incentive. I yeah, you know, so I did uh, I, I did some other travel books for like, you know, my family and stuff like that. I was kind of the family photographer and I've done a lot of stuff on my own. But that's the, you know, the first moment I really said, hey, you know, time to invest in some equipment and, um, you know, get a little bit more practice with like Lightroom and, you know, the Adobe mm. Creative Series and all that. So, um, so yeah, so that kind of kicked it off. And uh, my wife, uh, she's a big photographer as well. She, uh, uh-huh. she loves to shoot photos. And so... Um, we ended up doing a big month long trip around Morocco to a lot of these like little spots we hadn't been to before. And, uh, we ended up splitting kind of photo creds for the book. Uh, awesome. but we had a lot of, a lot of fun, you know, it was, uh, this was before we had our son. So it was just her and I and, um, a car and, you know, one duffel bag full of dirty clothes for the most part <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, a bunch of our camera gear. And, you know, we went out and tried to get the best photos possible um, from all these places. You know, we, we kind of have like one or two days of discovery and then we'd say, hey, this morning or this night, we're going to go out and shoot. Like, you know, we would kind of pick our spots. We really wanted to take a nice photo. Um, and she's she can be very um uh, precise with what she wants. So, you know, it's uh-huh. a very specific time of day with a specific kind of light. <laughs> and so if, <laughs> if she's not getting just the right photo, you know, she'd get really, really frustrated. Uh, but she gave me a lot, a lot of po- pointers. Um, uh, she's done a lot of photography work. Um, just right. uh, in, she does marketing and stuff. So, um, she does a lot of kind of design and photo work with that. And so she, she gave me quite a few tips, um, particularly as, as far as like post-processing and workflow and stuff like that. Um, oh, so it's been neat as a, as a travel writer to kind of put that into my bag now. Yeah. So yeah. Have, it's a very um, useful extra skill to have for sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this trip to Iceland, it was with, um, uh, hidden Iceland, which is a, a, mm. honestly a really, really awesome travel company. Uh, they're pretty new, but they're doing, uh, they've been around, I think about eight months now, but they're doing a lot of sustainable travel, um, doing smaller groups, you know, really trying to take, uh, take charge of, 
taking care of the environment that they're using for these tours and all these tour companies are. Uh, and they only hire like really and like excellent glacier guides and you know real experts in the field and all that and um one of the reasons they hired me to go out there is they just like my photo work oh, you know great. i mean um they said this is the first time this has ever happened to me you know usually like <laughs> i'll go somewhere and you know it's for to write a, a few pieces or something and they said no actually we'd like you to come out and do a few photos for us um and we'll set you on a couple of these tours oh, brilliant. and so you know they, yeah so it was great so i got to see some of the best uh you know kind of uh, landscapes in iceland and oh. um you know, take it, take some nice little photos and, you know, and I'll, I'll probably get some writing assignments out of it as well. Mm, but mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's as a, as a writer, it's been really neat to, to be able to add that in. So for moon, for uh, a lot of the, like the different online publications I do, uh, it'll be, you know, uh, a certain charge for your, or commission, whatever you get for the writing, the piece. And then usually if you add photos into it, then, you know, they, they add money to your commission as yeah. well. So it's, it's, Nice if you Perfect. can kind of package that together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, so from those experiences like Morocco and beyond and, and Iceland, very different yeah. places to photograph, but totally still, different. <laughs> what are your kind of, what's your big number one tip, especially for, I mean, imagine in Iceland, it's landscapes and stuff. What's your Dude, biggest tip? Keep your lens clean. Oh, ah, boy, yeah, that's ah. a hard one. Keep your lens clean. I can't tell you how many times I've, like, gone out and I thought, like, you know, I clean my lens and I've, I've been out shooting for half an hour to an hour and then... Uh, not maybe not even that maybe i've been out shooting for five or ten minutes and i haven't taken a glance at my my lens you know i'm looking at through my uh viewfinder and everything mm. seems clean but then you know like later on when you blow up these pictures you know all of a sudden you see the little like water spots or yeah. that bit of sand or smudge that got into your lens and you know all of a sudden you're stuck doing a lot more in post-processing than you wanted to yes uh, because it's an otherwise gorgeous photo but oh. just you know this you know these couple water dots you have to so frustrating getting, getting rid of <laughs> so uh for me yeah that's 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 kind of my number one you know is like whatever camera you're using it doesn't matter you know mm -hmm. just like as, as long as the lens is clean you, you know you'll, you'll get a decent photo hopefully yeah uh, but beyond that it's the normal you know it's like make sure you have your extra battery um uh when in iceland particularly you know don't just think about waterproof gear for yourself think about it for your camera mm, as well good point um, and the yeah, and these waterproof gear too, even though they, they say they're waterproof, um, I've also had good luck using these in the desert as well. Um, ah. Like when I'm out in the Sahara shooting photos to, you know, cut down on the sand getting into your camera. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, these, these kind of setups can help not only out, you know, in, in watery conditions like you're thinking, but, uh, you know, those waterproof setups can also really, really help when you're out in the desert. Yes, of course. Yes, the whole sandproofy thing. I do remember – being um, out in Tunisia in the desert and being just astounded at how much sand can get into every small part of everything. So I, yeah, every I nook and cranny, it finds itself every. I'm, I, I haven't been to the Sahara in about two years now, and I'm still finding sand from the Sahara in like different <laughs> bits of clothes. I don't know how that works. I can imagine that uh, things like those tiny grains of Saharan sand are a professional photographer's nightmare and i know how often we find sand everywhere my son still loves a good uh, run in the sand pit and then sand is in my house forever and ever and in every single thing getting it into your camera um is definitely a, uh, a photographer's hazard uh, anyway i did like those tips from lucas um, that's pretty much all for today. So thank you very much for listening to episode 109. I'll let you know where you can find some uh, useful things on the web and all of them will also be in the show notes and the show notes are at notaballerina.com slash 109. So firstly, a big thanks to Jim and you can find uh, Jim's blog Travel Stories and Images at travelstoriesandimages.com and I'll leave a link to his post on the Chicago Botanic Gardens with some beautiful pictures. Um, next, I chatted with Erin from Oregon Girl Around the World, and she's at oregongiraroundtheworld.com. It's nice when names and uh, and URLs match up. doesn't always happen. Um, so very good stuff. Um, and I'll also leave a link in the show notes to Erin's post on spring flowers in Copenhagen. Just beautiful. But I think, uh, as she said, she was right. she's right. And when you have that 
a very long, dark Scandinavian kind of winter, you really deserve a beautiful spring. I probably don't deserve any spring down here. That's why it's a bit lacklustre compared to that. Um, Finally, I chatted with Lucas Peters. Um, He is the author of the Moon Travel Guide for Morocco um, and also the principal photographer for that guide because uh, he's uh, upped his photography game. Um, And you can find uh, him at lucasmpeters.com. Now, don't forget to come and join our Thoughtful Travellers group on Facebook. We have all sorts of fun discussions there. We've had a um, a bunch more people join in the last couple of weeks, and it's a really active, fun place. What I love most is there's really people from all over the world, and we can have discussions on really interesting topics and get lots of different viewpoints. I find it utterly fascinating. So thanks to everyone who is a member of the Thoughtful Travellers group already. I really, really appreciate you, and I love chatting with you there um, each day. And that's it. So thank you very much again for listening to episode 109, and I'll talk to you again soon. This has been another episode of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. Show notes and other information are at notaballerina.com slash podcast. Join me again soon for another chat about why we travel. Bye for now.